Part 1. White Clouds. Great Tree Moon. Three Houses. The icy winds of the Agma Mountains have begun to scatter, and the verdant fields once again spring to life across Fodlan, heralding the start of a new year. As they celebrate the dawning year, the people pray that they may realize their full potential, just as a tiny sprout hopes to one day grow into a great tree. The continent of Fodlan, said to be protected by a revered goddess, has existed since time immemorial. Three ruling powers now control the land. In the south lies a region long held by a more than 1,000-year-old dynasty, the Adrestian Empire. Beyond its borders, to the frigid north, is the home of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. To the east, a league of nobles that heeds no king nor emperor rules what is called the Leicester Alliance. Once consumed by a tempest of war and turmoil, Fodlan and these three mighty powers now exist in relative harmony. This will be your first time at the monastery. I'd be happy to show you around. It really is Fodlin in a nutshell. The good and the bad. Like it or not, we'll be there soon enough. There it is. Garrick Mock Monastery. The flow of time bring you here. It's been years since I've last set eyes on this place. To be forced to see her now, uh... Her? You saw her in the courtyard earlier, didn't you? The Archbishop. Lady Rhea. Hmm. Lady Rhea? As you know, the majority of folks in Fodlan are devout followers of the teachings of Seros. The leader of that ridiculously large religious organization is the Archbishop, Lady Rhea. Thank you for your patience, Gerald. My name is Setit. I am an advisor to the Archbishop. Right. Hello. It has been a long time, Gerald. I wonder... Was it the will of the Goddess that we have another chance meeting like this? Forgive my silence all these years. Much has happened since we last spoke. So I see. The miracle of fatherhood has blessed you. That is your child, is it not? Yes. Born many years after I left this place, I wish I could introduce you to the mother of my child. But I'm afraid we lost her to illness. I see. My condolences. As for you... I heard of your valiant efforts from Alois. What is your name? My name is... A fine name indeed. 
From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for saving those students of the Officers' Academy. Hmm. Gerald, you already know what it is I wish to say, do you not? You want me to rejoin the Knights of Seros, don't you? I won't say no, but... Your apprehension stings. I had expected that Alois would have already asked this of you. I must step away for now, but I expect they will desire a word with you soon. Please listen carefully to what they have to say. Until tomorrow, farewell. Ah, I can't believe it. Force back into the Knights of Seros. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. Looks like I'll be stuck here for a while. And I'm afraid your services are requested as well. I... What did I do to deserve this? As a servant? Nothing like that. They want you to teach, by the sound of it. You heard those brats earlier talking about the Officers' Academy, right? Well, the Academy just happens to be short a professor. And apparently that damned Alois went and recommended you to Lady Rhea. So, you must be the new professor. My, how stern and handsome you are. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not the one you're looking for. You can handle things from here. Good luck. And watch out for Lady Rhea. I don't know what she's thinking making you a professor like this. She may be up to something. Stay on your guard. Oh, it's you then? So young. Competence and age are not necessarily correlated. As you well know, I am Hanneman, a Crest Scholar and Professor at the Officer's Academy. You have a monocle, so you're automatically a 10 out of 10. I wonder if you bear a crest of your own. When next you have a moment to spare, I insist that you pay me a visit so we can delve into the subject further. I'm Manuela. I'm a professor, a physician, a songstress, and available. It's nice to meet you. Uh, you're a songstress? Of course. Before I came here, I belonged to a renowned opera company. Perhaps you've heard of me? The Middle Franc Opera Company is beautiful, peerless. Spare our colleague the needless chatter, Manuela. Now then. It seems you'll be taking charge of one of the Academy's three houses. I expect you haven't yet been briefed on the nature of each, have you? Do you really not know? Fine. I'll do you a favor and explain. The Officers' Academy is comprised of three houses of students, each of which is closely affiliated with its region of origin. The Black Eagle House is for students from the Adrestian Empire, their house leader this year is Edelgard, the Imperial Princess, who is in line to be the next Emperor. The Blue Lion House is for students from the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Their house leader this year is Prince Dimitri. He is to be the next King of Fargus. Lastly, there is the Golden Deer House, which is for students of the Leicester Alliance. Their house leader is Claude, grandson to Duke Regan, the leader of the Alliance. To think that the next Emperor, King, and Sovereign Duke are all here. It certainly is a promising year for the Academy. I'll say. I just hope none of those little treasures cause any trouble. Hmm, quite. For now, I suggest taking a stroll around the Academy to get your bearings. And when you've a moment, please stop by my research laboratory. The old man has a point. Oh, and keep in mind that I've only notified the house leaders that you're our new professor. It's more fun that way. I suggest you try spending time with the students. Some odd ducks in that bunch, but they're good kids. I'm sure Lady Rhea will have more information for you tomorrow. But that should get you going. Good luck. You'll need it. Have you no intention of changing your mind, Rhea? Appointing a stranger, a child no less, as a professor at our esteemed academy is... I have made my decision, Sedith. I know worrying comes naturally to you, but there is truly no need. That stranger is Gerald's flesh and blood, after all. I can't say that's all too comforting. 
How trustworthy is this Geralt character? Is he not the man who went missing after the Great Fire 21 years ago? I would remind you that Flane is now here with us as well. I beg of you, please consider whether this is an unnecessary risk. Sadith, they have my trust. Let that be enough for you as well. More importantly, I have received a report from Shamir. I am increasingly concerned about a matter regarding our suspicious individual. We cannot ignore those who harbor ill will toward the Church, especially if they are frequenting Garrick Mach. Yes, that matter is of great importance as well. I shall continue my investigation. Rhea, for now I will have faith that you are placing your trust with the utmost care. I pray that nothing occurs to shake that confidence. Of course. Ooh, I can now do exploring. If you ever unsure what to do next, look to the left side of the screen, they'll just tell you. Whatever, you know. Wow, it's pretty, uh... Run around's pretty snappy. Well, what's up? I assume you are already aware that you will be teaching here at the Officer's Academy, correct? I heard I've been sold into slavery, yeah. To start, please speak with the three house leaders. You should also take a look around the Academy and acquaint yourself with your new home. That is your first task here at the Monastery. Please let me know if you accept it. Once you have finished, come and speak with me. May I ask a favor of you? Speak to the three house leaders, gather information about the students. The students can be found in the reception hall on the first floor and throughout the Academy. Quests are tasks given to you by people around the monastery. Those who can give or involve a quest will have icons. Consult the quests to see the ones you've accepted. The icons behind each quest indicate their status. Icons for essential quests are in red. You there? I don't need to talk to you, lads. No, I, I'll talk to you anyway. Ha! I imagine you were a bit surprised that I recommended you as a professor here. Frankly, we had someone else in mind for the role, but they ran off during our dust-up with the bandits. Can't entrust students to someone who's abandoned them once before, huh? You saved the lives of the students you came across. That, at least, was admirable. Now, you should make the rounds. Go around the monastery and see that you greet everyone. Okay. I do like the look of this game quite a bit. I think it looks nice. The overall aesthetic is uh, very pleasing. The nice trim that they have to the various uh, text boxes and the presentation is nice. But I do like that date in the top left. Minimap on the upper right uh, shows current location, locations of important people. 
direction of cast quest givers and more. Zoom in or change the map with VR. Our leggings are really weird. Oh, there we go. Now, now this is much more comfortable map-wise. The reception hall. Well, there's Edelgard. So, you've accepted a teaching position here. Pity. I was hoping you would lend your strength to the Empire. I never properly introduced myself, did I? My name is Edelgard von Hressfelk. I am the princess and heir apparent of the Adrestian Empire. I wonder if you'll be tasked with leading the Black Eagles. I hope you've had a chance to meet everyone. Would you like to know more about any of the Black Eagles? Sure. Hubert is the heir of Marquis Vestra. He has served me since I was a child. You may think his blood runs a bit cold, but... <laughs> Actually, that's rather accurate. Still, if you can get past that, you'll see he's quite astute and reasonable. So he's a student. Edelgard, I have a question. Why is one of your classmates 45 years old? <laughs> I just... Look at that man's face! Dude! For some reason, he thinks of me as a bitter rival and is always trying to challenge me. It's terribly irritating. His house is that of Duke Iyer, which produces Adrestia's prime ministers. That family is... perhaps too pleased with its own status. Alright, so he's kind of full of shit, is, is what my general read is. He's remarkably intelligent, but he only wishes to apply himself to tasks that particularly interest him, and nothing else. He's also fond of, well, napping. Oh, that's neat. A uh, very tragic haircut. If he though. had any work ethic or sense of duty to speak of, I suppose he would be destined to become an official of the Empire. About Casper. He's the second son of Count Bergley's. He has no inheritance in his future, which is perhaps why he's always so eager to prove himself. He's overly energetic and rushes headfirst into any battle. If he ends up in your care, be sure to keep a close eye on him. Seems okay. How about uh, Bernadetta? She's Count Varley's only daughter. I suppose you could say she's a bit eccentric, but she seems like a gentle soul. She looks cute. I believe she shut herself away in her quarters and doesn't care to leave, but don't worry. I'll make sure she finds her way to class. Yeah, she kind of looks scared of everything. Uh, but Dorothea. Few commoners have joined the Black Eagle House, but Dorothea is an exception. She's a songstress from a famous opera company in the Empire. I'm not entirely sure what brought her to the Officers Academy. I appreciate her tiny hat. To the west of Fodlan is an archipelago called Bridget. Petra is the granddaughter of their king. Bridget is a vassal state of the Empire, which is how she came to be enrolled here. She's incredibly smart and studious. Yeah, she looks nice. I guess that wraps this up. All right, I've talked to you. Do I have to do anything else with you, though? So you've accepted it. I never. Pro I am. The yep, one this is I hope the... you had a chance to meet everyone. I guess I have to talk. Use this one too. Me? Well, some think I'm a bit distant, arrogant even, but there's little to be done. One day I must rise to become Adrestia's next emperor. What else? Well, it seems to me that we may have similar personalities. Uh, I don't know, we haven't really talked much. Me? What else? Alright. Alright, well, I've talked with you. I was wondering, uh... I guess I just talked to everybody. Pardon me. I thought they'd, like, cross off the paper that's, uh, with her. But, you know, so it is. Let's, uh... Pardon me. Let's see if we can find the others. Let's do our weird run. What do you think? Officer's Academy.
Oh, there's a uh, Claude. Well, well, scored a teaching gig here, did you? Talk about a great first impression. I guess that means I'd better introduce myself properly. I'm Claude Von Regan. I'm from the ruling house of the Lester Alliance, but don't worry too much about all that madness. I'm guessing you don't know which class you'll be teaching yet, do you? I bet you'd like ours. We're not as difficult as the other two. Have you met the folks from the Golden Deer House yet? Care to know more about anyone? Sure. <laughs> Piqued your interest, have I? As luck would have it, I'm pretty curious about you as well. But what's life without a bit of mystery? Let's just spend the next year or so learning about each other little by little. He has the most powerful level of charisma I've seen in a game in a while. He's the heir of Gloucester territory. If you haven't already picked up on him, he's a bit arrogant and fancies himself a ladies' man. Not with that haircut. That said, deep down, he's really devoted and honest. Though I wouldn't mind never hearing him talk about his noble obligations ever again. He comes from a merchant family, but his parents died in an accident. Seems like he's had a rough This dude's life. about to explode out of that shirt. Look at that. Look at this big lad. Despite all that, he's just about the most cheerful guy you'll ever meet. His passions are training, eating, and nah, actually that's about Exploding it. Exploding out of that shirt. He's the second son of a merchant family. Hmm. Since his brother will inherit the business, he's training to become a knight. If you ask me, it doesn't seem like he truly wants to be a knight. He's probably just doing it to please his parents. He doesn't look like the knight type. He's the second son of a... If you ask All right, let's, uh... I'm not even gonna pretend to do that name. Lysithia is the daughter of Count Ordelia, and is probably the youngest student here. But watch out. She gets angry if you treat her like a child. As for me, I do it on purpose. You have to make your own fun in this place, you know? Yeah. Sometimes you gotta be a little mean. This girl just looks tired. Marianne is Margrave Edmund's daughter, and that's pretty much all I know about her. She doesn't interact much with other students, so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of folks here have never even heard her speak. Hilda is the only daughter of Duke Goneril. It seems her father and brother coddle her quite a bit. If you look up lazy in the dictionary, her picture won't be there because she never got around to submitting it. <laughs> Not too unusual for a noble, I guess. I like him a lot. Leone enrolled because she wants to be a mercenary. I think she said that her father is a hunter. She's pretty blunt and as stingy as they come. A habitual saver, too. I think she's hoping to repay her village for helping to send her here. Yeah. Alright, well that does it for checking on you guys. Right. There's Dimitri. Please accept my apologies for the other day. You came to our aid, yet I hadn't even the courtesy to properly introduce myself. I am Dimitri Alexandra Blathed. Crown Prince of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Of delightful news. I still have much to learn, but I'm confident I could benefit greatly from your guidance. In any case, I hear you're investigating the different houses here. Did any of the Blue Lions catch your attention? Uh, yes! You! Me? Oh, um... <laughs> please, forgive me. It's difficult to open up on the spot, don't you think? I'm afraid my story has not been a pleasant one. I do hope that doesn't color your view of me, but I understand if that can't be helped. Alright, I got a whole lot out of Hello. that. Dudu was born in Dusker, and has been loyally working in my service for the past four years. He's rather taciturn, but once you get to know him, you'll see he's a kind and good-natured young man. Dudu, what he's... Dudu. Dudu, what he's... To do was he's <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having a moment. Felix is the heir to House Fraldarius. He has a bit of a sharp tongue, but don't let that fool you. Deep down, he's a good guy. He gravitates toward people who are skilled. Perhaps you would enjoy a friendly competition with him sometime. 
He's the adoptive son of Lord Lenato of Castle Gaspar. But I hear he was born a commoner. He has an extremely earnest personality, so I'm certain he will approach your lectures with great enthusiasm. Sylvain is the heir to House Gautier. He is a capable person who highly values his friends. That said, well, he's always been a bit of a... <clears throat> skirt chaser, so to speak. Ooh. Pardon my bluntness. I speak with him about it often, but it doesn't seem to help. Hey, so sometimes... Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. But you gotta be free. I hear she was born to Imperial nobility, but a twist of fate brought her to the kingdom. She may seem carefree on the surface, but she's actually a kind soul who pays careful attention to everyone around her. Annette is Baron Dominic's niece. She is a talented student who scored extremely high marks at the Royal School of Sorcery. She's cheerful and hardworking. Brilliant, really. Though, she can be a bit oblivious at times. I hear she caused an explosion in the kitchen last night. Hey. I mean, as you know, anime girls can't cook. Ingrid is Count Galatea's daughter. She is also a childhood friend of Felix, Sylvain, and myself. She is diligent, industrious, and principled. In truth, she is more knightly than most knights you will ever meet. She looks neat. I appreciate your effort. Quest completed. Ob obtain the the junk. I suppose I should return. I look cute. How are you enjoying your time at the academy thus far? I hope you have found our halls brimming with the vitality of well-intentioned souls. Hmm. I suppose it is time for you to take charge of one of our three houses of students. I must note that I am personally against entrusting someone as lacking in trackable history as yourself with such a task. But it is as the Archbishop desires. The Black Eagles, the Blue Lions, and the Golden Deer. All so different. I hope you've made it a point to get to know each of them. Since you are new here, we have decided to allow you first pick. Manuela and I will take charge of the remaining two houses. Alright, so... We could pick Edelgard. And from what I can see here, Tiny Hat's neat. Um, there's the dude on the far right there that looks to be 45 years old. Big fan of that. Um, I, think, I think her name was Petra, the... the um, Tan skin girl that's like no, toward the middle there. She's really cute. I think she looks nice. And then there's the girl that's like constantly scared. And I can do. You know, the, the rest of the guys kind of look like, eh. Take it or leave it. Uh, we got Dimitri here. Who had. He seems to just be in control of all the chads and nice girls. Uh, yeah, not much. There, there is that one dude exploding out of his shirt. Is that with you or is it? No, that's with you. Okay, there's a lot going on over here. Okay, one incredibly, an incredible set of cute, cute ladies, right? But then you also have some detracting points here because you got this dude, this dude on the far right, who, who is just aggressively ugly. But there is that dude pop exploding out of his own shirt. Uh, before I started this LP, I'd always planned on never touching Edelgard, because I feel like she's the popular one that everyone's gonna pick. Uh, so I was just gonna be between these two. And, um, fuck. Weighing the options here. Big fan of girl on this team that's really tired. Really like that. But I also think that this is a pretty consistent group, too. Hmm... Hmm, real tough. This is real tough, actually. Because there's like a good, fun group of people here. On both sides. I'd say, in general, the male side on Claude's side is pretty weak. Whereas it's a lot stronger with uh, Dimitri here. But then you got, you got some nice, cute girls over here. 
Yeah, see, this is, this is sad, because, like, these are the units I'll have. I assume you can't snipe units from other houses. So I gotta make a choice here. Uh, hmm. Uh... You! So you have chosen the Blue Lions led by Dimitri, correct? Sure. Your heart has made its choice, then. All I ask is that you guide these open minds with virtue, care, and sincerity. Uh, above all else, I must remember one important thing. While I have made a choice, it is 100% in the eyes of my audience as the wrong one. <laughs> they are Maybe. all promising we'll youths who bear the weight of Fodlin's future upon their shoulders. I hope you appreciate what an honor it is to lead them. Brother? Oh, I am so sincerely sorry. I did not mean to interrupt. Your hair is so big. I'm in the middle of something, Flane. Is it urgent? No, no, it's nothing. More importantly, who is this? This is our newest professor at the Academy. Oh my! A new addition to the Officer's Academy! I am so very pleased to meet you, Professor. I am Sedith's little sister, Flame. I am so happy to make your acquaintance. Let us focus on the topic at hand. There is something you should be aware of. In a few days' time, there will be a mock battle between the three houses, intended to gauge the current progress of the students. We will be using this battle as an opportunity to ascertain your own abilities as well. Please do not disappoint the Archbishop. That is all. Wait, does this mean our new professor is... No, I really can't believe it! But I was speaking to you so casually, as though we were companions. Oh, I am so sorry, Professor. You just look the same age as the rest of us, and... Oh, and, and I'm sorry I just said that to you. I really must <laughs> watch my tongue. Maybe I made a good choice here. I don't mind if you treat me as a comrade. Well, you say that, but... I just don't know about all of this. I'll admit, it doesn't sit well with me either. After all, we wish to show you due respect. Sure, but if the professor says it's okay, shouldn't that be enough? That is, if your highness can consent to such a thing. After all, we're already speaking this way to our future king, so we may as well relax our speech with our professor too, right? Well, we're not in the kingdom, so it only goes to follow that we should all speak companionably. <sighs> I concede. If the professor says it's fine, we ought to accept that kindness gratefully. As for me, I'm not sure I can manage. You don't have to force yourself if it's too difficult. You're fine with that too, right, Professor? Such benevolence is a sight to behold. I don't suppose you would care to join me for tea. We could discuss education and marriage. Control yourself, Sylvain. I have more important matters to discuss with our new professor. Come to the training ground later. There, you will show me what you're capable of. You aren't wasting any time, are you, Felix? As it were, count me in for any such battle. <laughs> Pardon me, but I would also love to observe you in battle for future reference, if that's okay with you. Ash, I won't have you speak of merely watching. You should join us as well. <laughs> if you get injured, simply say the word and I'll patch you up straight away. Your Highness, do take care not to go overboard. You worry too much to do. I'll be fine, I promise. <laughs> I forgot his name is Dudu. I made the perfect choice. My companions, is there not something inherently wrong with crossing blades as a way to bond with each other? Huh, I never thought of it that way. Well, if that's how you feel, I suppose you'll just stay behind while the rest of us are at the training ground? Ingrid, my dearest friend, you really are too harsh on me. Well then, Professor, what do you think? As you can see, the Blue Lion House is a lively bunch you'll find none who work harder. I'm certain we'll cause our fair share of trouble, but I'm very much looking forward to the year ahead. We ran across a calendar. Say, while you're here, I'd like to use this device I designed to determine whether the power of a crest resides within you. 
won't hurt a bit. Promise. You don't know about crests? Well, allow me to tell you everything, absolutely everything, about them. Is your calendar clear? This will take a while. Crests are a fascinating topic. But before one can dive deeply into said topic, one must first understand what crests are. They are power incarnate. They are said to have been bestowed upon humans by the goddess countless ages ago. They exist within the flesh and are passed down through bloodlines. Those who carry crests may excel at magic, display exceptional strength, or any number of boons. Each crest has its own power, the nature of which is beyond mortal understanding. For now. And you believe I have a crest? I suspect as much, yes. But we won't know for sure unless I look into the matter. As I said, crests are passed down through the blood. However, just because someone carries a crest does not necessarily mean their descendants will inherit it as well. Only a scarce few descendants of a crest's bloodline end up inheriting that crest's power. Perhaps one of your ancestors bore a crest, and you just happened to inherit it. That is how a crest usually presents itself after. Do what you can to find out. Yes, of course. I'll get to the bottom of it straight away. Now then, please go ahead and hold out your arm over this device here. What is this? A pattern I've never seen before. Is it possible an as yet undiscovered crest has been detected? To think, there are still crests out there that even I am unaware of. How thrilling! <clears throat> Pardon my unrestrained jubilation. I have much to consider. You may leave now. I have more research to do in regard to this crest. Yes, so very much more research. But for now, your work here is done. Hmm, what could this line here be indicating? Perhaps it represents a lack of symmetry. Or perhaps, what in the world? Oh, I see. It may be connected to that, but to a greater degree than usual. That's all I did that day. With each moon, professors of the Officers Academy receive a schedule for the month ahead. It notes the days on which events and missions will take place that month. Pay careful attention to your schedule, so that you may thoughtfully plan what you intend to do each month, and when. The monastery schedule features different events on different days. Each week you'll have one day off when you may choose an activity from the list. You only, your only option at first will be explore. Click the calendar with the directional buttons to view the schedule. Well, I think I'll just go ahead and save, as we've done. I think we have done plenty for now. Well, that's like an instant, super, super quick save. Wow. Well, I think we will end here, and next time we will begin our life here at the uh, at the monastery. I've made my choice, and uh, no take, no take backs on that. I hope you're enjoying the LP, and I will see you tomorrow, or. You click the next video if that's already out for more Fire Emblem Three Houses. Until next time, everyone.